If you are looking for solid returns in a big six bank, CIBC may just be the bank for you. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. CIBC or the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce was formed all the way back in 1961 from the merger of two other big banks, the Canadian Bank of Commerce and the Imperial Bank of Canada. This merger made CIBC a major player in the Canadian banking sector. Today, they offer a comprehensive suite of financial services. This includes everything from retail and commercial banking to wealth management and capital market services. And they have clients in both Canada as well as internationally. With their commitment to innovation, especially in digital banking, CIBC can continues to adapt to changing needs of its customers, ensuring it remains competitive in a very agile financial landscape. CIBC also owns Simply Financial, which used to be PC Financial. At one point, they were one of the few options for fee-less banking online. Join today's conversation. Let me know in the comments if you are an avid investor in the Canadian banking sector. Thank you for your participation. If you love this sort of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more and another huge thank you for that click. CIBC did miss on earnings in their last quarterly report as they were expected to come in at 158 per share but instead came in at 157. That was not a huge miss but it still was a miss nonetheless. For Q1 2024, that's coming out on February 29th and the expectation is for an EPS of 167. We will of course find out if they match those expectations when we do our next big six quarterly review, that should be in March. For the time being, we are going to figure out if CIBC is a great investment opportunity. So we are going to need to dive into some fundamentals and that means we need to call on our good old buddy, Mr. Math. We will start as usual with a wee bit of their surface data. They have a current value at the time of recording of $60.42. Their market cap, that comes in at $56.27 billion. Their beta, that comes in at $1.09. That means they are pretty much as volatile as the market average, maybe a tiny, tiny bit more. Their earnings per share, that comes in at 5.16. And they have a price to earnings ratio of 11.90. Amongst the other banks though, the average comes in at 14.5. And just to put that into perspective, on the bottom end, we have National Bank with a price to earnings ratio of 10.8. Bank of Nova Scotia down there too with a 10.9. Up towards the top, we got uh, Toronto Dominion Bank at 14.0. And uh, Bank of Montreal has the highest of them all at 22.3. Looking at their price to book ratio, that comes in at 1.10. The average across those same banks comes in at 1.30. On to their return on equity, that comes in at 9.0. 72%. We are going to add another stack called Return on Assets or ROA. This one provides additional insight into a company's operational efficiency, profitability, and risk level. It helps investors make informed decisions by evaluating how well a company is using its assets to generate earnings. Normally, a good ROA is around 5%, though it can be very sector specific, and a good ROA for a bank can be around 1%. If the ROA in this sector falls well below 0.5%, it does indicate that there is some level of concern. And when we look at CIBC, that return on assets, it comes in at 0.52%. That places them in the very beginning part of the safe zone, but we'll take it. The surface data was not too bad. And if there was anything I would like to see improve, well, I would love to see that ROA move up a little bit higher. Maybe, maybe get it closer to 0.6%. Okay, let's peel back another layer and take a dive into their cash situation. When it comes to revenue, that comes in at 21.31 billion, and they have earnings of 4.73 billion. Now those earnings are projected to grow by 9.33% per year. Profit margin wise, they're coming in at 22.2%. These profits are a little bit lower than they were a year ago when they came in at 29.1%. As for their free cash flow, looking good, 11.14 billion. Operating cash flow, just as nice, 12.15 billion. They have a pretty healthy level of cash, that's for sure. Let's take a look at their fair value. So their current value comes in at $60.52. And using a discounted cash flow model, we do get a fair value of $108.94. So that does paint them as being undervalued by 44.4%. That is great, but I have a feeling it is going to be a 
a long journey to reach $100 a share. I have a feeling the analysts agree with me on that because when the analysts put their one-year price target on CIBC, they're looking at $62.96. So they're only they're only predicting a 4% growth over the next year. I have a feeling we're going to do a little better than that, to be honest. Cash-wise, things are not too bad. We have a small drop in their profit margin, but it's not enough to be a huge concern. So let's ratchet up that drill and dive a wee bit deeper into their return data. When it comes to dividends, they have a nice looking yield, 5.948%. It is a quarterly dividend of 90 cents per share. The payout ratio on that is 66.67%. This is a very sustainable dividend and it has been consistently increasing. In fact, over their last five years, their average dividend increase has been at 5.67%. 0.71%. That's not too shabby. Looking at their returns, on the three year, their price rose from $57.40 to $60.52. So that is a return on investment of 5.44%. Factor in the dividends, we get a total return of 22.51%. If we look on the one year, now they, they have struggled in the last year a tiny bit. That price actually fell from $61.33 to $60.52. So that's a return on investment of negative 1.32%. Add in the dividends or back on the positive side with a total return of 4.37%. Their three-year return looks great. I, though, would very much like to see higher numbers on the one-year return. And I suspect as rate cuts begin, that could help quite a bit. Okay. It is time to take that last jump down into this deep dive and check out their debt situation. They have a total debt of $211.12 billion and their equity, their total equity, comes in at $53.21 billion. That gives us a debt to equity ratio of 396.7%. High debt to equity ratios are absolutely normal for a bank and this is not really that concerning of a number for this sector. In fact, if we look at their cash and cash equivalent, that comes in at $251.38 billion. So they have enough cash and cash equivalents to cover their debt if they wanted to. That's pretty darn cool. Let's take a look at that short term. Their short term assets come in at $294.36 billion and they've got liabilities up there a bit at $856.89 billion. On the long term, looks a lot better. Their assets come in at $681.36 billion and their liabilities come in at a nice looking $65.61 billion. When looking at a bank with a lot of mortgages on tap to be renewed this year and of course next at higher rates, you have to be concerned if the defaults are going to be an issue. CIBC has their loan loss provisioning in place and it is expected to cover what is coming. They have 131% allowance for bad loans. This means they have set aside the cash equivalent to 130 31% of the loans they are expecting to be unrecoverable or delinquent. This has them very prepared for what is coming. When we look at their cash flow, they do have the cash flow to service their debt and cover interest payments with, of course, their EBIT. So earnings before interest and taxes. This debt situation is really not that bad. Okay, it is time to ask that question. What is my final verdict? The big six banks do not have an easy road ahead with the wave of mortgage renewals coming in pretty darn fast. Rate cuts later in the year will help some borrowers, but for a good many of them, it will not be enough. The banks, like CIBC, will do what they can to prevent foreclosures via the tools they have, like, well, extending amortizations. From the investing side, they have this already priced in with their loan loss provisioning, and as such, it will hurt, but not as much as many people are expecting. In fact, if the loan loss provisioning comes in more than needed, it could be a good thing down the road, as this money returns well back into action. CIBC is a solid blue chip foundation stock that has solid sustainable dividends and the potential for some steady growth. This is a good stock for exposure to the sector and they have a very good financial situation that makes them one of the more resilient of the big six. This is a stock that is, it is good for most investors. Some passive income focused investors may not find the dividend high enough and thus look more to banks like Scotiabank with a 7% yield. That is fair enough. I think on the longer frames though, you will be more than likely to see higher total returns on this one. If you are interested in this stock we looked at today, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. Let's continue that learning journey by checking out this video on EQ Bank. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.